Hello everyone, hope you're having a great evening. We are gonna get started here on one of the belt patterns out of the leather tooling pattern book. So if you have this book and wanna follow along with us, open right to the center of your book. If you open up, it'll be the pattern closest to the middle there. That's the one we're gonna be working through here tonight. And so I have this wet down and transferred over onto our leather. I'm just gonna go right on in cutting this in. So if this is a pattern that you have tried already, um, shoot me a picture. I'd love to see your guys' rendition of some of these patterns that we're doing out of the book or out of the pattern packs. All right, hello, hello. Appreciate you guys jumping on here. We're just getting started tonight. Um, especially if you're jumping on taking the time to watch me live that's uh, much appreciated as you're getting on here as we go through the evening if you like what you're seeing or find value in what we're doing be sure to hit the like and heart buttons and that's always encouraging to know that you guys are getting something out of it so this pattern here it's got some of these long swooping lines and it's important to try to get that long flow to your pattern to be sure and draw that arm back the whole way when you go. Kind of position yourself to where you can finish that cut out and then really fade those lines. See how I just fade that out to nothing as I pull those cuts. These ones on the stump are different. I'll just stop those pretty abruptly because we'll come in here in just a little bit put some stops and mules feet and make those look really cool. But any of these that end down in your vine work, we'll draw those out a bit. Now here especially, this is good to watch anytime you're coming under or over something where this vine is gonna be coming and it comes underneath this piece here. I wanna make sure this line come to here and then I pick it up where it's going to come through at in the same angle there. So it's easier if I cut that at once. I cut to here, just break my knife up, come down, and then keep going. Same thing on that inside. That way you know you're coming through at the right right position. So your eye's gonna pick up and follow that right on through there. I'll try to pay attention as we're going here. Make sure I stay in frame for you as we do this. All right, hello, hello. Appreciate you guys jumping on. I see you joining us live. And if you're not joining live, if you're catching this replay on YouTube and you want to be live with us, be sure to follow the 23 plus page on Facebook um, so you don't miss out when we do these live and hit the subscribe button so you never miss when they're posted here as well. Okay, I'm going to spin that around so I can draw these cuts back to me that are coming around here. Now, this swirl that comes, I just picked that tip up here, which you'll notice I didn't connect those points, which is something we've talked about in some of the other videos. I'm going to connect those with my bevel, but not with my knife, because I want to avoid a weak spot in that leather. I don't want a little point that's going to lift up on me. Okay, roll this around nice and smooth, fading that towards the other line. Okay, now we have that pattern all cut in. Before we start beveling that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab our maker's mark. and I'm gonna lay this right in here so I know where to bevel back to. All right, if you're looking for a good place to get one of those maker marks, uh, Tim Purdy with Steel Stamps Incorporated does a great job. I've 
enjoyed working with him on those. Okay, now I'm going to start beveling. And with any of the belt patterns, I always work my way all the way down one side, getting everything I can reach before I turn that leather. It's just going to help with our efficiency so we can speed up the process. With a lot of a lot of your tooling, if you can keep your tools moving, it really speeds speeds your time up a lot. Uh, I think a lot of the time that people use when they're tooling is the actual the sitting and the looking and the figuring out what to do or switching tools. Uh, but the actual time that your tools are running. If you keep them running, you can cut down your time on your projects quite a bit. Um, but that just comes from the more you do, the more experience you get. You know where your tools are going to be going next. You know what tool to grab. Uh, and that's where hopefully doing some of these videos will help you guys. If you're a tooler and looking for some some tooling instruction uh, hopefully these are going to help to where you'll have an idea on where your tools are going to go um, with some of these specific patterns and cut down on your your guessing time a little bit if you're not a leather crafter and just enjoy watching the process i appreciate you watching as well and hopefully the value you're getting out is it's good entertainment out of it. All right. Working our way right on through here. Getting a smooth bevel line is going to be key to any of your patterns. And you'll notice I'll go over things a couple times if I need to to smooth them up. But one of the one of my kind of key tips there is going to be to move that bevel only a little bit every time you actually strike down with your mallet. So when I'm walking it along there, I'm not taking big bites or jumps with that bevel, I'm just moving a little bit at a time and that's going to help smooth that out because it'll just keep it smooth as we're going. Okay, Is that right on down. And having a good bevel actually helps a lot too. Uh, this particular bevel that I'm using I get a lot of questions on um, but it is a extra so it's an XX steep bevel from Barry King and it's a checkered bevel it looks pretty smooth just because it's been worn a lot but there is checkering on there it's just kind of worn off down at the tip but with that being so steep that's what helps that impression stay really crisp and not not go way out wide there. Barry King is, um, I, I love his tools. I got a lot of, a lot of good tools from him. Uh, that's what I figure kind of maybe one of your step ups if you're just starting out and you have say a beginner's kit um, the the first tool i would recommend improving on um, or upgrading to would be a good bevel because it really is key to lay out your whole pattern and gets you on the right on the right uh, path to tooling that a nice even pattern 
but if you're not quite if you want to step up if you're not quite ready for for one of barry king's tools yet um weaver actually has a a steep bevel that that you can get pretty comparable results it's uh, it's not in the starters kit it's an add-on tool but it's a little bit uh, less expensive than than say one of one of berries like this tool here uh, it's not quite the quality that this tool is for sure but it's a good middle of the road step up if you're just slowly adding in to your tool block so just a little little helpful hint for you there which if you are interested in getting one of those shoot me a message i'd love to give you a code that saves you some money there from weaver as well takes the longest of any of the tools that you have uh, to go through but if you don't rush it and actually get nice smooth lines you're really set up to, to make the rest of it look a lot better and be kind of a lot easier getting that that good look to it Oh, and if you're on here live with me and you have any questions, be sure and shoot those out. I will try to address as many questions as I can as I'm here live. Try to keep checking, checking the screen for those. Um, and if I miss the live questions, then I'll do my best to come back and answer those in the, in the comment section there. down to the end of our pattern just a few more lines left again by just taking those little small moves as i'm striking that that mallet down we're able to get a really nice smooth line i'm still getting a really good burnish so that dark color that's coming from my tool striking down that's kind of an indicator that my moisture content's still doing really good in my leather. It's three indicators that I look for on, do I need more moisture in my leather? Do I need to wet it down more? Uh, my three indicators are gonna be color. So the color in the leather itself looking out here, and then also the color of that burnish that, it's, that my tools are leaving the sound so when i strike my tools down you kind of get get to know the sound that your leather is going to make and then the uh the feel of it so as you're striking those tools down you learn that feel i can't hardly describe it really um the actual feel but you you start learning what feels right and what feels too dry <laughs> need a two-week apprentice position is what, what you say there huh well i don't know i've actually tossed around ideas before <laughs> i uh i have some classes that that i'm working on putting together some more online courses that are uh, that are super in-depth like start to finish the beginning leather work you know leather work for beginning leather crafter and tooling and leather selection all that good stuff in there but some of it i need uh, it would be a lot nicer to have somebody else running the video camera so we can move around get some different angles as we're moving along with stuff uh, not so much the tooling but some of the other things so i've Honestly, I have tossed around the idea about seeing who out there 
can run a camera that wants to learn some leather work and kind of trade out a little bit there. So I don't know. I have to, I'm still tossing that idea over. I guess we got some time to work on it now that everybody's stuck uh, <laughs> stuck at home. This tool here that I'm using, this is called a vertical line thumbprint. And I run it just a little bit different than a lot of people will run like a pear shader. But you can see there's lines on that tool. Maybe you can see if I can get it to focus in. Those lines are running vertical right along with that tool. There's a fat end to this tool and narrow end. And so it's, it's pretty long and narrow as opposed to a pear shader is going to be short and wide. But which, which side I use of that uh, just depends on what's going to fit in where I want to go better. Uh, there's not a big difference as far as anything else other than does the wide end fit in there good or the narrow end. So like this piece here, I did that little narrow end. Right up here I have some more room. I'm going to go ahead and use that wider end. And if any of you guys have taken my online drawing course, we've talked about that that center line that we that we're drawing our lines to. That that center line's the same way, the same line that I'm looking towards when I'm running these lines, the vertical lines on there. I'm wanting those to kind of find that same line there. So that may sound a little foreign to some of you, but uh, if you've taken that, you understand what I'm talking about there. And I'll be tipping that tool and fading that along so I don't get a hard tool impression on the back end of that. Okay, camera's getting tipped a little bit out of whack. There we go. Okay, there you guys situated a little bit. All right, now on this pedal here, this is actually rolled underneath, which again, if you're not sure what you're looking at, it's kind of hard to see that, but where that rolls underneath, I'm gonna use this shader here and actually get that depth. So I'm gonna get shadow underneath there. There we go. Does that look a little better? Does that look like it's going underneath there now? Uh, yeah, you're welcome, Sheila. That, uh, hopefully that answered your question about that tool there. I'm just gonna put a little light shade right on that outside corner there as well. Thank you, thank you guys. Appreciate the, the thumbs up and the hearts there. Kind of encouraging, lets me know we're on the right track. All right, this fold over here, I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna get that shading underneath there and then fade that out. All right, now with these, this kind of stump here, and this last little piece, I'm gonna get that little sticker vine up there with a little shading, just like I do some of those other ones on the inside. Now here I'm gonna use actually the narrow end. I'm gonna come up to that point, really tip this and roll right around that edge. See, I'm gonna roll that tool around there. And I just leave that little ridge right on that outside edge. Kind of just highlights that stump there, helps stand it off. Now I'm gonna come in with the, with the wide end of that tool. I'm gonna work from down here and just start easing my way up. Okay, could you hear the difference there? Come up here, a little bit harder where it gets wide there, and then I lightly tap up around and fade that back in. So that's gonna help create kind of a ridge in the middle of that stump there as it rolls around. All right, now the tools are gonna come pretty fast. Those are the two that that take a while, but these next ones, they're gonna hop right through here. So I'm gonna start with 
this little stop or lifter, it's kind of a, a home modified tool. It's just an old garage sale tool that's been ground down. But I love this tool. I'm gonna put it right up here where I said we'd come back with a couple stops. Lay that in there. Same thing. There, there. Uh, the number of that shade tool, there's, I think it's a size one from Barry King is the question there. I believe it's a size one. It's not a, it's not a craft tool, so there's no actual tool number. It's a, it's a Barry King tool. Okay, now I'm going to come in with another Barry King tool. This is, uh, this is that round bevel, that smaller round checkered bevel. I'll use it in place of a, a lifter in places. We're gonna come in right underneath where it's fold it over. Makes a bit of a difference in there. I'm gonna come in on the inside of the swirl here. that out now I'm gonna this is where you're gonna be able to see a bit of a difference too on the inside of this little piece I could just leave it like there and and it wouldn't be that big of a deal but I do have this little lifting tool so I'm gonna get in here the difference that's making Uh, adds quite a bit of depth there, picking that up. Okay. Keep moving along our pattern. Same thing out here. Same thing right on this stump here, where I didn't even come in much with my other bevel because it was, wasn't going to fit in and around that little curve. Fits in really nice and picks that up. Couple more spots. We'll use this one right up here. Another one out on the tip of this one. Thank you, thank you. I see more of you guys jumping on here and joining live. Um, so we're just working our way through here. That. Uh, this is one of the belt patterns out of the leather, my leather tooling pattern book. One of the four belt patterns that are in there. Uh, so answering a question there, no thumbprint. Uh, yes, this the shading tool that you're asking about there, this was the thumbprint. Um, this is a vertical line thumbprint from Barry King there. All right. Now going back to where I'd use that little... Uh, that little lifter where I put those stops in. I'm gonna come back with my small mule's foot. I'm just gonna stagger a few of those in. Starting deep, fading to light. Again, going to that, pointing those towards that center line that we talked about in the drawing course, if you're in there. But the center of that vine work is kind of where I'm looking at. Now, come back around this swirl. I'm going to come into a small veiner. Oops, I'm going to turn that around. I'm going to have that veiner where it has the curve on it. I'm going to curve it the same curve that the swirl's going. And I'm going to tip up a little bit and we'll rotate as we come around there. I'm tipping that on edge so I don't get the full impression. I want it faded across there. You see that rotating around? Oh, there we go. And that's the only place on this pattern where I, where I do use that. Okay, we're getting right through there. I told you these last tools go pretty quick. Now, I'm going to... Uh, 
switch it up a little bit. These last two tools I'll use in different orders, but I use the my my decorative cuts and then my backgrounding. So my backgrounding, what I'm going to be using here is a bar grounder. Uh, now this has got several little seeds in a row on it, and I don't. I'm not trying to overlap them, but I'm trying to just fan. Oops, helps if I get in view for you. I want to fan that out in there. Ideally, the way these are designed, there's several sizes with different numbers of seeds in there. And you should, like in a space here, keep them all going the exact same direction. We would hit down and we start walking our way up. And now I run out of room. There's I'm too close to fit in with this one. So I would need to step down to my next size, less seeds. I can fit a couple in there and now I'm running out of room because I'd be running over something. So then I need to step down again. Like that, okay? That is how the bar grounders are designed to work. That takes uh, quite a bit of time to rotate through like that. Um, and I believe that's one place where I go for, for a little more speed and efficiency as opposed to quite that perfection in there. Um, and I actually use a little bit different technique and I will fan that and rotate that as I need to, but I keep it going the same direction. I don't just sit there and turn it a bunch of different ways and, uh, and overlap, but make sure I'm still in, in view here as we do this. Okay. Now that's still a really clean look to me. I think I've never once had a complaint <laughs> from from customers saying that that my backgrounds look sloppy or anything. So that's how I run that tool. Uh, so you won't see me switching through a lot of different tools as I run through here. But I do wanna show you how that's actually designed. Out here on these outside edges, I'm gonna tip it up and just fade that in there a little bit because we don't have a hard cut border. But I want to stand it out with a little bit of backgrounding tool there. That uh, just fans right around there to fill in our spot. It's still a tedious process, and you want to take your time. Even if you're doing it this strategy uh, of sticking with that one single tool to work, make your way through there. And sometimes your spots are just small enough that you can't do it with, with your bigger one. You do need to size down, um, but I'll still follow the same principles with that as well. You know, these patterns, they look so much different once you start distinguishing the background, you know, what's behind versus what's on top. And I uh, can't help but sit and think at a time like this in our nation or in our world, really, that, man, once we start moving forward and this is all behind us, how much different things are going to look when we start distinguishing this as our past um, 
and put put that background back in behind us. So a little a little extra deeper thought from the tooling tonight, but I uh, I do always think about that when I'm working on backgrounds, especially right now with everything going on. Okay. There we have it, our backgrounds are done. Now, we are down to the decorative cuts. Last but not least, this is probably, again, one of the parts that I like the best. So we gotta start coming in freehand in some of these cuts. They're gonna help bring flow to that pattern. Yeah, knife time, absolutely. Love the knife time. Okay, and no definite right or wrongs on these. Uh, a lot of times less is more, especially when you're getting started. Uh, you can really be going along pretty well and then kind of get yourself in a bind trying to do too much with your, <laughs> with your swivel knife. Um, if you tooled very long, and messed with your decorative cuts very much, surely you have made at least one piece in your lifetime worse and not better by your decorative cuts, right? <laughs> I know I sure have, but that's just a live and learn type of thing. You're never gonna get better if you're not willing to get it wrong. Right. Now there's no, it's art, right? So there's no real wrong, technically, but it can still look ugly. So, <laughs> but if you're not willing to have some of those outcomes, then you're never going to push yourself to get better, right? So don't be afraid to take some chances, try some different things when you're when you're running those cuts, but remember start deep, fade out to light when you're doing your decorative cuts, especially that's going to help, um, help that flow and help that look that you're after. And we don't ever want to leave like one cut by itself. I always want to go kind of two to three. Turn this around where I can draw these back to me. I'm going to see if I can pick this up with a little tiny cut here. Almost just get that started. Have it look like it's coming out from underneath there. Last little spot right around that swirl there. Okay, there we have it. Our one of four belt patterns from the leather tooling pattern book. Turn that so you can see it long ways there. And again, if you already have the the leather tooling pattern book to find this pattern here if you want to give that a shot and tool right along with me on this video you can run the replay just open up to your center page and then find your way to the middle so that's uh, the easy quick way to find that that particular belt pattern in there if you have that book already um, if not it's available on the website it is both print version and digital download so you could have that as soon as right now and get to along so uh, have fun with that pattern i appreciate you joining me on here any questions leave them in the comments and i will try to get back to those as i can take care guys